analysis in boats. Um, the, you guys are familiar with how a lead acid battery works, or a battery works? Tell us, tell me. No. All right, basically what you have is you have a solution, and you have lead plates submerged in a solution, right? So in a battery, the acid is sulfuric <coughs> acid, and you have lead plates in it. What you can get from that is an electronic charge. So each one of those plates holds an electronic <coughs> charge. So you can take a piece of metal and submerge it in a solution, and that will have an electronic charge. You know, like basically everything, our bodies, everything has an electronic charge. Um, so because of that electronic charge, you have a lot of movement and things like there are some metals that are, uh, will pull particulates from other metals because they have like a stronger charge almost, or a stronger pull. It's not a very great description. They Maybe want, they're, they really want to grab electrons to fill, their it has to do with, voids. yeah. Yeah. Um. Um, so basically, what you have when you put a boat in the water, um, the ocean is this gigantic solution, and you stick a boat in there, um, and then you have, for all intents and purposes, a really large battery, right? Um, so what you're going to see, uh, especially around boats that have a lot of like electronical systems that are grounded, you know, um, around dock sites where there's a lot of shore power as well, you know, where you have electricity moving through the vessels and being consumed, you're, you're going to see more electrolysis. And electrolysis is just the movement of um, electrons from one metal to another. It's just that, like the coal, right? So in application to boat building, what the hell does that mean for us, right? Um, quite often you'll see like a stainless steel prop shaft with a bronze prop on it. And quite often what you'll see on there is what we call sacrificial zincs. Um, there is this whole kind of like list of materials um, that's called the nobility scale or, um, and it's like the more noble metals are the ones that are gonna pull they're like the strong they have the stronger pull so zinc is really really low on the nobility scale and zinc's not really gonna let go or zinc's gonna let go of its extra electron really really easily so what you'll see is a sacrificial zinc. So the zinc is what's going to corrode first instead of the bronze or the stainless steel, your prop shaft and your prop, right? And you'll see that on the sides of fiberglass boats. You'll see a lot of them on steel boats or aluminum boats. It's kind of like unpainted zincs, right? Um, why, um, why does the steel shaft have a bronze prop? Um, stainless steel, it's, ba it's basically like turbulence pitting. Um, <coughs> stainless steel does not do well in terms of corrosion resistance um, at higher rates of speed in oxidized water. Um, there's some funky stuff with that. There's a book by a guy named Nigel Ward called Metal Corrosion in Boats, which is like a ton of photographs in it. It's absolutely the best book on metal corrosion and electrolysis. If you want to sit down and read about it, personally, I think it's absolutely fascinating. Um, it's a really great book. Um, and he goes into that and he has some really great photographs of like a uh, bronze prop shaft versus stainless steel, or a bronze prop versus stainless steel prop versus, you know, and like the pitting and the corrosion over the same amount of time in the same water. So I guess if you're if you're running the motor fast enough, you're like constantly oxidizing the water, like reoxygenating the water, like like by pulling air. Yeah, down. I I can't remember exactly why that doesn't work, but it doesn't work. Here's why, not well, um, which is why quite often you see bronze props. Um, so.
So all that being said, uh, quite often we use bronze fasteners. Um, and generally speaking, most boat builders frown upon um, the galvanized nails or galvanized spikes. You know, it's kind of a little bit hoity-toity. Um, and, you know, we, we never use brass below the water line, right? I've never seen that get used. Um, and depending upon who you talk to, um, they are either going to be for or kvetch about stainless steel. And that can be a hot topic sometimes as well, right? So in terms of fasteners that we use for boats, like the logic behind that, um, silicon bronze um, or Everdur can withstand <coughs> salt water and an anoxic environment, so an environment without oxygen. So buried into a piece of wood, bung covering it, all that stuff, very, very well. Um, and it's not, it's fairly high on the nobility scale, right? Um, so silicon bronze will pull zinc from a sacrificial zinc or from any other part of the boat that has, say, galvanized steel on it, right? You guys familiar with galvanized steel? That, that's, is it? hot-dipped in zinc? They're either hot-dipped or they do what's called electroplating, which is basically submerging the fastener in a solution. There's a zinc in the solution and there's a charge through the water. So electroplating is basically using <laughs> electrolysis to plate the steel because it's all the electrons from the zinc are going. So this kind of like dull, crusty galvanization, this is hot-dipped galvanization when you see that kind of like flecky, weird mirror-y galvanization, that's electroplated galvanization. Electroplate galvanization is a lot thinner, so it loses its zinc coating very quickly. Hot dipped, or sometimes you'll see like on really nice like siding nails, they'll say double dipped, you know, and they'll be all crusty and stuck together. They have a lot of zinc on them, they're not gonna lose that zinc quickly. Um, but Say you have a bronze fastener and you got a bunch of bronze plank fasteners and then you have a couple of big galvy drips holding your backbone together, <laughs> right? Um, when you start to see, when you're like say sanding the hull and you start seeing the bung heads being cleared of paint, so the paint's really thin on the bung heads because the bungs are starting to literally get pushed out because this is pulling the zinc from this and it's like literally displacing the bung so like you can kind of tell how shitty the corrosion is in a boat based off of the bungs because of the electrolysis right um, even when it's buried in the wood both of them are buried in the wood when you start to see the rest of the hull has a nice uniform coating of paint but as you're sanding, yeah. you see those like the bung heads just right. have like you can see the grain in the bung heads, but you can't see the grain in the surrounding wood, right? Mm -hmm. Something along those lines, because those bungs are getting physically displaced by the extra material that's getting pulled to. But if those are both bed embedded in wood, they're still doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Amazing. because it's surrounded by a solution. Right. Wow. It's a big battery, right? What's the purpose of the galvanization? Steel will corrode really, really rapidly. The surface corrosion is a little bit slower, but the pitting corrosion can be very devastating. Um, depending upon the salinity of the water that the vessel is in, because that also dictates the level of electrolysis, um, you can have pitting corrosion up to an eighth of an inch per year on uncoated steel. Um, so if you have a five sixteenths fastener, you're gonna get three years out of that before you're fitting all the way through it. Mm -hmm. So you're right, it doesn't actually quite work out that way. Do you use those? Those galvanized yeah. fasteners? Yeah. So um, a large majority of like larger boats are fastened with galvanized fasteners. Um, I think if you're building a boat with a lifespan, say like mm -hmm. 20, 30 years, I think Galvi's totally great. 
you know, it makes a lot of sense. It's really, really inexpensive. You know, this would be like, I don't know, 90, yeah. 90 cents versus a buck plus, you know? Um, so there's, there can be a lot of sense in galvanized, but it is, it's like, if you know where you're using it and why you're using it, um, it can work really well. Um, if you're building something that you want to have last for a really long time, then, you know. What, what are the uh, screws that we use on the sinker tip? Uh, those are all silicon bronze. Okay. Um, so, that's a little bit on the, in the terms of like bronze and galvy. The same thing applies to brass. You know, like if you look at this screw, you can see that it's like, it's totally different in coloration from like uncoated bronze, you know? So that's chrome plated bronze. Um, but if you look at the head of that, you know, you have really, really different colorations there. Um, and people, you'll have brass or naval brass, is what they'll call it. The reason why we don't use that under the water or in exposed places is brass has a really, really high zinc content. Um, so what can happen is you'll wind up putting that screw into a piece of wood, it'll look perfectly fine, you go to remove it, you know, five, ten years later, it'll still look perfectly fine. You put a screwdriver to it and it'll crumble into dust hmm. because like 70% of its composition, which is zinc, has been pulled away from it. So like the skeletal structure is still there. It still looks like a screw, but its actual strength is degraded really intensely because all that zinc has been pulled out of it. So you'll see brass used on like interior fittings because it is, it's, it's less corrosive, but it's not a thing that you want to submerge in a solution you know, into the ocean. Um, so, that's why you don't see brass used on the exterior or below the waterline on a boat. You'll see it fairly frequently, interiors and hardware, you know, like door latches and miscellaneous bits like that. Um, and this is kind of like, this is an extreme version of silicon bronze corrosion. But if you look at where that bolt is, was cut, you know, you can see that even though the exterior of it looks really gnarly, you know, it still has its strength. Th and this was cut after <coughs> it after was be gnarly. Yeah. I mean, you can see there's a lot of, almost like, I don't know, for lack of a better word, calcification of material on the exterior of that. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have an example of a bronze fastener that's like leached a lot of zinc from other things? Is that uh, what that is? So, the last thing I, I would like you, to touch on. Are you saying on, that silicone bronze and bronze are different? There's a lot of different alloys. Okay. Um, so, what we use most of the time is called silicone bronze or Everdur. But that is, can be put below the waterline? Yep, yeah, and that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, but there are, with all of these metals, you know, it'd be like calling a piece of steel a piece of steel is great. Steel is an alloy. There's like thousands of variations of different types of steel. So there's like these really generic names like, oh, that's stainless steel. That's high carbon steel. You know, this is mild steel. There's so much within each one of those genres of like what that alloy is actually composed of and the slight variations that do change things. You know, this is stainless steel and this is stainless steel. This is totally different than this as an alloy. This is what's called 304 or 18.8 um, is the kind of like designation for this. This is 316L, right? Um, <coughs> this has a lot more ferrous uh, iron in it, right? So this, in terms of its strength, is going to be a little bit stronger. It's also less corrosion resistant, right? 
the higher the grade of stainless steel that you can get, like the higher the number, mm -hmm. with the uppermost echelon being 316L, um, the more corrosion resistant it is and the less strong it is. Huh. Because of its attributes of its alloy, it also work hardens more than <laughs> rapidly. Had to get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the kind of like really crude ways of telling this is putting these two against a metal or against a magnet, sorry. Um, stainless with more ferrous iron in it, say like 304 or 308, um, is going to have a really low magnetic capacity. 316 is non magnetic. Right? There's not. The low magnetic so capacity means it's. It's, it would be less than a piece of solid, like a, a mild steel okay. bolt. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's a way of kind of telling the gradient in a very crude sense. Um, so you're balancing corrosion versus strength? Uh, and expense most of the time. Yeah. 316 in terms of fasteners is a lot harder to find. Mm -hmm. and um, the thing with stainless that is kind of like the point of contention um, among both fasteners is stainless steel does not do well in an anoxic environment. It works really well um, in an oxic environment. What's the oxic environment? Uh, there's oxygen that's uh, around it. Hmm. to a point. So, for example, well, let's say you have a fiberglass boat with a balsa core deck, right? And the balsa coring um, has gotten wet and it's just like totally saturated and always just kind of full of water. And that fastener looks perfectly fine on the top and perfectly fine on the bottom, but you're seeing rust streaking coming out of that fastener. Quite often if you go to open that fastener up to replace it, it'll snap right in half, you'll pull the fastener out, and you'll look at it, and it'll have this like hourglass of corrosion mm. to the kind of like the apex of the anoxic environment that it's in, right? Mm. Um, some people will even go so far as to say like, don't use stainless in like interior space, like inside of cabinetry, where it's like in an enclosed airspace and there's not air movement, right? Mm. You know, do your own research. I thought yourself. rust was oxidization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> and oxidization um, that's happening uh, with iron. This is that's mm -hmm. why this is less corrosion resistant. It has more iron in it, which bonds really, really well to oxygen. Why rust happens so quickly on tools. Um, so this being is a non-ferrous fastener for all intents and purposes. Um, you also pretty infrequently see Manel. Um, we have some Manel fasteners upstairs, but that's a really, really high grade, very high on the mobility <coughs> scale. Um, amazing corrosion resistance. What is ferrous? Monel. Something as fair as it has iron in it. Okay. <coughs> I can't remember what the composition is. Which, uh, yeah, a lot of nickel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's corrosion resistant and expensive. Same thing like on that. Yep. <coughs> and very high on that. Right. 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 Um, so, any questions around that? Or we'll talk. What's ink and L? I have no idea. Um, from uh, Mesoamerica? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not explaining the sacrificial zinc that we have in there. Yeah, so when, when you have electrolysis that's present on a boat, or you have two dissimilar metals that are touching one another, um, you want to have uh, a zinc there. Um, you can kind
kind of gauge how much electrolysis is present by how rapidly that zinc decomposes. Um, after, I think there's it's like after 20% of the surface is covered with corrosion, it's efficacy as a zinc, um, like it, it just like plunges. As a sacrificial zinc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like if they, if they start looking corroded, like you replace them. Hmm. Um, Do we have any examples of a sacrificial zinc that's Around. kind of been used up? I don't have one that's used up. And the one good one that I had, I gave to Annie yesterday to put on her prop shaft. Um, <laughs> Uh, they can be, they sell them in all different sizes and they sell them that you can like bolt on the side of the boat. They sell them for all different prop shaft diameters, mm -hmm. etc. How big is the one that you gave Annie for her prop shaft? Maybe the size of a small chicken egg. And that's for Fox? Mm -hmm. <coughs> but stainless steel prop shaft, bronze prop, stick it on there. I think the last one lasted for like three or four years. Where do you mount it? Um, there's a space between the prop and the actual um, stern post. And you just put it right on the shaft. And that you so like will the clippy get zinks? Say what? Will the clippy get zinks? I would presume so. Yeah, it'll definitely get one on the prop shaft, and depending on how hot the environment they're going to store it in, you might put one on the hull too. Because sometimes you can have a hot zone where there's just stray current in the water itself and it can start to... Huh. Like you mean hot, like electric hot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hot. If it was on a dock with, with electricity... Yeah, gas. sometimes you can get it. Rockland Harbor is relatively a hot harbor. Oh, it's just a oh so a mooring, it doesn't... I was thinking <coughs> a dock would be hot, but a mooring would not uh, be You hot. can have a mooring in a hot spot too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say you're like moored next to a boat where the person's terrified of lightning strikes and they've like bonded everything in the boat, you know, so like the mast mm -hmm. is bonded to the chain blades, which are bonded to the keel bolts, which are bonded to, you know, everything else and your, your battery ground is running to your bonded everything. And then like... The ocean is your ground. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have a shitload of solar panels or a wind generator and you're like... So they're stealing your boat. They're stealing his boat, so to speak, unless he has zincs. It's stealing his off of his boat. Electrically yes, the, the bolts the, from other the boats zincs that are would nearby, be just <laughs> yeah. yes. protecting him from getting. They wouldn't have known about sharks. Them. <laughs> you can like create your own hotspot inside your boat too, if you're not careful. What is that? Again. Like uh, bilge pumps yeah, wired incorrectly, so yeah. the bilge water itself was acting as a battery and it was leaching mm -hmm. from. So, basket. if you're inexperienced, a good thing is to put zincs everywhere so you yeah. yeah. cover your head. Zinc <laughs> on your belt. Yeah, is this how we get into wearing like tinfoil hats? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, that's why you wear tinfoil hats. <laughs> <laughs> Just to block the radio so waves they're trying to control your mind with. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or we'll all just start taking zinc. Yes. Um, zinc's, zinc's I up there. Any other thoughts <laughs> around? The, show, the more iron rich uh, stainless steels are more magnetic? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So but stronger. Stronger, but yeah. less rest yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't the DeLorean made out of stainless steel? The which? The DeLorean. The DeLorean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was made out of. Like cocaine. Aluminum. 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 Alumin
it would have, um, you know, like that's why copper rivets last for so long versus <coughs> using galvanized spikes and making galvanized rivets. Um, so would it, the copper have held up over a long period of time on the bottom of a bow tank? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, we do the same thing with bottom paint now. It's the same idea. It's just a paint that's full mm -hmm. of cuprous oxide. Mm -hmm. You don't want to necessarily take any bottom paint and stick it on the bottom of an aluminum boat because then <laughs> it'll just eat the way the entire boat <laughs> and the boat will sink on the mooring. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, so there's based off of what the hull is made out of. You know, if you have a wooden boat, it's fastened with silicon bronze, and you stick a <coughs> copper rig bottom paint on there, great. Um, if you have like an aluminum boat, you're gonna be looking for other stuff. So is that because uh, <coughs> the, aluminum? That the aluminum really wants to give away its electrons to the copper? If I remember, I have to. I think it's more actually, it, I think copper, or is more electropositive, or aluminum is more electronegative than copper is. So, because I think it's a, I think it has three electrons in its outer shell and copper has two. So, we so it wants to pull from the copper. Okay. Or it wants to. Give to the copper. I can't remember. It wants to it fill goes. its outer shell. <laughs> yeah, it wants to fill its outer shell. So, theoretically, if it had more, I think it wants to pull. But sometimes it depends a little bit on the. What's in copper that makes it kill the copper? The copper itself. The copper itself. That's just one thing, one compound copper. Yeah, it's not a, yeah. it's actually not a compound. So it's, it's copper, that's what it's copper, copper is. Not an alloy. Yeah. An alloy is a combination of metals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So steel is a generic term for ferrous alloys. Lots of alloys, yeah. So steel. And bronze is <laughs> copper. And bronze is a copper. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, not, I'm trying to remember which one. What else is in there? Zinc? Uh, has. Which one is, zinc is more likely to be in the other? Um, yeah, bronze, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. They've got all sorts of stuff that yeah. they put in there. <laughs> yeah. I went to the Depending on how long they want it. I'm probably doing a better job. It's kind of like as generic as steel. As steel is for iron, bronze is for. Right. Copper. Because yeah, yeah. you can have, like, I think Lee Nielsen makes their tools out of manganese bronze. Okay. Um, but you can have a bunch of. But copper is what you get out of the earth. So. If you if you had a hot if you were in a hot spot and you you had fasteners that were all over the nobility scale, um, as long as you have the sacrificial anodes, you're okay. Uh, it depends on how fast those anodes are disappearing. You could but, it, uh, but theoretically, if, if if you had the, as long as they they were there, they would. And they would definitely help. Take yeah. Yeah. Help. It's, it's not going to be like <laughs> it's not a cure all. Okay. Okay. And because you are going to have locations where like, you know, unless you place all your zincs consistently so that, um, you know, everything mm -hmm. is within the same. Electronic field, so to speak. Um, okay. And then that zinc corrodes. Yeah, you so said once it looks twenty percent corroded or whatever. Yeah, Can you yeah. clean it and put it back on, or just or generally replace it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are a few bucks. They're not crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, another question. You said that uh, larger boats use galvanized fasteners. What are you talking about? Generally speaking. On larger boats, just because larger of is what like Scoo schooners. schooners. Okay, like all you these know. schooners, most of them use galvanized fasteners. Okay, but we're also talking about again with that whole lifespan, corrosion resistance, and the strength needed. Mm -hmm. When you start getting into fasteners, you know, like square nails that are, you know, half an inch by half an inch or three quarters of an inch by two quarters of an inch, and galvanized, like hot dip galvanized. You know, you have a lot of fastener that can get slowly eaten away before it like has lost its strength, mm -hmm. and it can withstand that pitting corrosion more readily. Um, so it's like it's less of a problem on with larger scanlings. Um, mm -hmm. When you have really small scanlings, that's when it can like 
you know, it's like a sheetrock screw. You know, you use it on an exterior application and you get a few years out of it and then it just snaps because it's like, um, but you can find something in there that's like a monster. Okay. So if you find that the bombs are starting to pop out when, when you're standing, if you're starting to see the, the, the bombs, the bomb heads, is that telling you that you need to replace fasteners or there's something else in your boat that you need uh, it's telling you that something, um, some form of electrolysis is happening. So if you have zincs and you're seeing that those are corroding, <coughs> then you can kind of surmise that you're probably pulling a lot of zinc into those fasteners. If you don't have zincs and there's a combination of metals, you can surmise that one metal is pulling from the other and you're like, you're getting corrosion somewhere on a fastener. You know? mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you're, you're taking a lot, of, you need to be taking in all the information and yeah. going from there. It's not like a yeah. one size fits all, you know, it's just a, like, it's something that you can be cognizant of. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah. The, uh, <coughs> we used stainless steel fasteners to fasten the planks on mm -hmm. the Dublin Bay that was, uh, Specified. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you feel about that, Kevin? Would you have used stainless steel fasteners? As long as you stay consistent, you should be all right. I wouldn't use like half stainless and half bronze because the stainless okay. is going to eat away at the bronze. But, uh, yeah, they use a lot more stainless in Europe than oh, they yeah. do here. Mm. Okay. Yeah. What's um, your opinion? doesn't seem like a good place to use it, but that being said, um, you know, I've talked with builders who have been putting together boats with stainless steel fasteners for like 30 plus years and um, have not had an issue with it. You know, it's cat skinning. And in my opinion, there's only one right opinion. <laughs> there's only one right. One other difference in terms of galvanized fasteners, the way galvanized fasteners were created in late 1800s, early 1900s, with it being wrought iron, um, is very, very different from like a mild steel or a low carbon <coughs> steel fastener. Um, the way wrought iron is manufactured, uh, it it's, has a lot more corrosion resistance and a lot more strength. Um, so wrought iron is kind of, it's like, it's almost like working with a different alloy just because of the way that it's made um, versus, I can't remember the name of the method. There's like you know, basically three different methods, wrought iron and then two others for like mass manufacturing of steel goods. Would the wrought iron be galvanized though as well? Uh, sometimes. And sometimes yeah, sometimes not, not necessarily. Oh, okay. um, yeah. But like, do you remember when we went over to the Stephen Tabor and Noah pulled out um, some of the original fasteners that were in that boat? And he was saying, these are wrought iron. Look, you can see because of the way it's corroding this way versus these ones that aren't even, you know, these ones are 40 years old. This wrought iron is whatever, 80 years old. I can't remember what the timelines were. But, you know, the wrought iron ones look, were like almost twice as old and looked better than that were newer. Yeah. 